Hello everyone, welcome to another painting class. Gosh, I can't believe it's Monday again. And where is this year going? Already the end of February. Can you all hear me? Wave if you can. Yay, thank you. Lots of lovely familiar faces. So good to see you all. Thank you for joining me. So um, I can never remember from one month to the next what I've said I'm gonna do. So I need to start writing it down for sure. But what I thought we'd do today is I'm going to show you a couple of new things. I want to show you some new wreaths. But also the other thing, I thought we'd do a session on painting on coloured back, backing papers. So painting onto patterns. So if you haven't done anything like this before, um, this is what I'm going to be painting on. I did prep a couple of them. So I've painted a little floral bouquet there and also some other little flowers. And it's nice the way that they just sort of gently fall into the backgrounds. And then I've got some more solid colours that I'm going to paint on. So I think you'll be able to see a little bit more of it. So Andrew's just doing a bit of wizardry with the cameras. And then you will guys will all be able to see what I'm talking about. But while he's doing what he's doing, I just wanted to share this with you. So the reason that I'm painting pages is because, and here we go, it's, it's here, is because these are actually going to go in this book. And this is a little book that Amanda's making, it's a little plug for her because she's got her first collection coming up in the next couple of weeks. And these are gonna slot into each of the pages and then get decorated on top of it. And while I was doing them, it made me think about it. I thought, actually, we haven't done anything about painting on pages with pattern. And these are gonna become part of the decoration. So they're gonna have pockets and wallets and all sorts of other stuff on there. And I know you'll get the chance to see them finished. So first of all, I wanted to do that. The second thing is I want to show you how to do our, um, now we call it, what do we call it? It's called Queen Anne's Lace. I want to show you how to do that in detail so we get that really right. Because I've seen, I've seen a bit of it. I don't think I've ever shared with you exactly what we need to do. So I want to make that right. And then also, I'll just show you what I've got here. Because I'm working with quite light colours, I'm actually not putting any black cardstock in. But I am making myself a little palette on the table, just using a couple of my cello bags. So I've taken the sticky bit off and I've stuck it to the table. So the colours that I'm working with are called Fuchsia. Then I've got Purple. I've also got Sedona, which absolutely loving this colour. It's a really nice shade. I've got Faded Pink. I've also got Iris and I've got Mild Blue. Not Baby Blue, it's Mild Blue. Now, some of you may have seen this on Crate and Craft Show this morning with Lou, um, but we've also, we've bought it to you on our website and it is on a really good deal. And um, Cadence Paint's going up in price, but actually it's gone up in price. So these are gonna be at 4 99 each, but I've done a com price comparison online with other paints of the same quality. And this still is by far the best value for money that you can get. So I'm going to put those to one side. I'm also going to be using some white and I've got a big bottle of white and we are going to be bringing this in for you to buy if you want it. And because I need some brown, but I need a little bit, I'm going to use one of my brown strips that's got me some different colours in it. So I'm going to use those. Oh, and the other thing is I found a couple of nice new things to do, a bit sort of a bit of a hobby. So you can get these little, you know when your glue gets um, stuck in your glue nozzle? Look, it comes out in one piece. It's, it's really addictive, this. Just picking out the little pieces of glue cause, and, and paint because it actually comes out in one go and, you, and the nozzle's clear. So I'm just going to drop that in there. So I'm just going to pop some of my white down. So... Remember, we always start with a puddle the size of a 2P piece. And I'm then going to use some of my purple and then Sedona, this lovely colour. It's so vintage, it's absolutely stunning. And then also a little bit of the faded pink. So they're the colours that I've got. 
going to be working with a number 14 brush. So I've got quite a small flat brush. This is from the brush collection, which you all are aware of. And I'm going to work onto this piece of cardstock first of all. So we're going to we're going to paint a, a wreath first of all. So I'm going to need to come into these paints. Now, when I'm painting with these, I don't need to actually tip any of it out. Whoops, but I do need to make sure my thumb doesn't go in the paint. So that's my first faux pas for the evening. Just wipe that off. Um, so I'm going to go into my chocolate brown and my tan, we'll get two of those. When you open it up, you may find, depending on whether it's been upside down or not, that you've got some paint on the lid. Great place to take the paint from. And if I was dipping in, I would just dip into the corner like that. This one, I've got a little bit of paint again on the corner, so I'm gonna take that paint first and just stroke my brush backwards and forwards. Now I'm seeing some absolutely stunning work. Um, Andrew, did you manage to capture that work from the lovely Amy? Um, if we can, we're gonna try and show you a piece of work from a young lady who's 14 years old, and I'll show you where she started and finished. And she's actually been teaching herself. I'm super proud of her. I mean, she's doing a fabulous job and I think it'll give us all something to aim for. Okay, so I'm going to paint myself a folk art style heart. So I'm going to start off in the middle. Now, remember when we're working, if I lead with the lighter colour, so that's this soft brown that I've got, then the dark brown will cover it up as I paint like that. If I turn my brush round and the dark brown goes first, the light brown will cover it up. So we're gonna start with the dark brown and I'm just gonna paint a rough heart shape. So the start of it, and I'm gonna go over the other side and I'm gonna paint again. So now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the white cause I want it a little bit lighter and I'm going to go again and I'm crossing over at the beginning and this time I'm going to stop every now and again. But I'm going to start always from where the original heart was. So pulling that together. So again, crossing over this way and then we'll take that piece out there and then we'll come over again and over again. And we're going to keep repeating this three, four, maybe five or six times because I need to build up where the actual stems of the, um, imagine it's wicker, so where the stems of the wicker would be going and they'll come out and over. And what I really love about this is you don't have to be super accurate, but what you do need to do is keep that chisel edge together. So really build up and get that chisel edge together. So this time I'm changing the colors. You'll see it's gonna be lighter. I'm coming in there. Look at how much lighter that looks if I move my hand round. And I am hardly touching the surface. So I'm being very, very gentle with it as I go round, just literally coming round here and look at how this is just coming together and my arm is actually off the table, my wrist is above the table, and I'm just building in that design. And see how now that wicker work's really starting to come together. So we'll go again here, and then up there. So I'm making sure that each piece is literally twisting round. And I'm now, instead of going in a soft stroke, um, let me just share that with you on the back of a piece that I've got. So instead of me going softly like this, I'm now coming out much more, much wider and much more exaggerated to give me that extra bit of depth. So I'm now, and I'm coming off the edge, I'm sliding and I'm coming back in. So I'm really exaggerating the strokes that I've got so that I've got this lovely wicker heart coming together and just building it letting the wreath work, just do all the work for us. I'm trying to get it so that it's a little bit more even than it is at the moment. So I'm coming up a little bit at the top. So the tops are quite level now. 
and then I'm going to come down here like that just bringing in a few of those little strokes letting them just fill in there we go so I'd be happy with that as a, um, a heart I'm just going to put in a little bit more detail just there so that's the start of my wreath and you need all those pieces crossing over it's quite dense there so let's put it's not a good stroke there but we'll make that one a bit better so we'll put that detail in and probably one more just there so you've got your outline shape to work to so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put my flowers on and you're going to find these are going to be really subtle because I'm working on a very dark shade. So I'm using the, um, the dark brown that I've got on one side and the white on the other. I'm just going to pull those colours together and it gives me this sort of almost from a camel shade right across to the colour of the purple that we've got. So we'll go with those. I'm happy that I'm liking the way that blend is working and I'm just going to start off by putting in let's put some we'll put, start with roses we'll put those on first and look at how that color is just blending in making it look really subtle very soft shade we'll build that in that first one now I need to get myself another one of those so I'm going to come up here and put that in and this time we'll sort of expand it out a little bit, come down the bottom and then just wiggle that in. And you can see how I'm not trying to make them all absolutely perfect. So we're bringing in these colours. Um, I'm going to put another one here and this, but this time I'm just going to make sure that I've got some really clean white on the edge so that when it comes over, you can see the difference between that shading so we've got another one just there layering over the top I'm going to put another one up here but this one is just going to be sort of like um, a half so we'll we'll turn that over and I'm just going to show you how I just did this little stroke here so this one wiggle 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 and then turn and flip it over on its edge so let me show you that on this piece of card. So you start off and I'm, I'm literally, I'm blending my color and then I'm lifting on the edge and I'm turning it and flicking that color, that edge round. Okay, so that's another one of the strokes that's on the um, teaching guides that we've got for you. I don't actually like the way that one ended up. So I am gonna go over it because I want it a little bit smoother where the white is. So let's go there, that's loads better. Um, I'm going to need a little bit more detail up here. And I think that means I'm probably gonna want a little bit of a bud. So I'm gonna pop that up there and put the top in. Let's just make that a little bit lighter. So I only picked up white there, everybody, because that white makes all the difference. And then you can see I've gone round there. This one's going to need a little bud in it. So I'll pop that in very gently there and just come round. Let's go round the top. And we'll go this way with this one and come round and round. And actually, we could probably have another one just there. We'll take this bud this way. Let's put that in. So we've got one that's a little bit rounder, a little bit more robust. You can see that bottom line coming in. Now we need a bud up here. So we'll put this one in so that it's sort of coming round this way. So almost like the plant's leaning. So we've got them sort of coming out. And look at how these colours are really starting to lift each other and so the background is now fading into the background, whereas at first the, the wreath really didn't stand out. It was much more about seeing what was going on with the actual background than it is now. And now I've come slightly higher here. 
if I'd done this level and the thing wasn't symmetrical, it wouldn't look right. So I've gone higher than the flower that I've got there. And I'm also going to make it so that it's a, almost a complete um, rose petal. So it's sitting right in front of everything else that we've got. So you can see that direction and that detail. And let's talk about the colours that we've used. So first of all, I've used the brown and the, um, the two shades of brown, but I've actually only used the two shades of lilac. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more of that lilac and I'm going to add another flower into here. And this one again, so the whole thing needs to stay higher than it does on this side, otherwise it isn't gonna look right. And I think we'll go up here. So I'm thinking about which direction my bud is actually working in. And as you're watching me picking up the colors, you'll notice that I'm not picking up every color each time, but I am pulling the color down on my brush to make sure that I've got it well loaded. Didn't pick up any color there, but it still gave me that really nice bit of detail. And then here, we'll just put in one more little flower. And I think we can sort of almost let this one, yeah, let's let it come round there. And we'll put a little bud in up here. So I've lost my white edge, so I'm just picking up the white. So it's back, it's there. And again, let's go back with that so we can get a little bit more of it. Round there, round there. And that's the little bud. Now we need to join all of this together. So to do that, I'm going to, I'm gonna carry on with, what have I got? I'm gonna carry on with the number 14 and I'm gonna put in some little buds. So they're gonna go here like this and I'm going to put them in in pairs. So they just look like they're meant to be there. And then let's go up here. So we'll put another one in there and another one just crossing over it a little bit, just there. And I think we could put, we could have one just here. So again, just needing that little bit of white to bring the design together. So there, and again, just there. So we've got that in. And you can see now painting on these colored backgrounds, how effective it is really just gives us that extra little bit of tone, depth of color, and you can really build up the design. And then finally, just two, just there like that. So we've got a lovely wreath with quite a lot of detail coming into it. It's not, um, you still can see the lines of the, of the leaves, of the wreath, sorry. And now I'm going to use the Sedona and I'm going to use that to put in my leaves. It's quite unusual because you'd be expecting to go with maybe um, a, a green, but we don't want to do that. We're going to work with, we're going to work with the Sedona and you'll see how it just, it will start to really bring this design together. So I'm just picking up some more white. It's going to soften that edge a little bit so that we can see there. Let's build in that little bit of white and we'll come here and again just that little bit of white just there so again I'm picking up the white but I'm not picking up any other color still plenty of paint on this brush so I'm coming around and just putting in some little buds so some little leaves to just get this all building together. Now, if anybody missed the beginning and wants to watch from the beginning, don't forget you absolutely can. If anybody's got any questions or requests, please write those in the chat because I'm more than happy to try and help if I can. Um, anything in particular that you want to see. I just, um, at that point, I tipped the brush into the wrong color. So I'm going to come back and instead of washing this brush, I'm just gonna wipe it through and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the dark brown on one side and the white on the other and bring myself a bit of a contrast into the um, painting. So I'm going to bring in that brown just there. 
so I've got a little bit more detail so it looks like it's meant to be there. Um, we're putting a couple of little flat leaves so just make sure they're well, um, the brush is well loaded. I need a little bit more detail on some of these buds. So just sliding the brush, letting the brush do all the work for us, sliding it round. So it's starting to fill up a little bit more of the brown and the white and we'll come over here and put in a couple of little flat leaves just over the top. So it's very, very tonal, getting that lots of detail in here, back into the Sedona. So back into that pink so that we can get a little bit more pink in here. So you can see we've got that little bit of detail that we've got here. So I want to bring that in. More of the pink, tiniest little bit of white. Let's reload that brush. Let's get um, some little flat leaves in here. And I think we'll just go out with a little wiggle. And let's get that middle into it there. And then a bit more to just balance the design. So we'll put some stems in these. And let's just also get a few stems up here and maybe one just there. And I think I'm probably about happy with the way that that's starting to look. It's quite full, um, lots going on, lots of finishing off with all the detail. It's got a little bit missing here, so I'm gonna come into the middle with that little leaf there, just to give it a bit more detail. And I'm gonna come down with one more just there. And then I want to put a bow on but I don't want it to be a bow of um, like the ones that we've been doing in the past. So I'm gonna come in and get some really light, this Sedona, it's fabulous. And it's using a little bit of water and I'm making it into like an inky puddle. So it's quite liquid, not drippy, but quite liquid. And I'm going to come into here, use my little finger to balance and I'm just gonna paint, ooh, that's too much water. So did you see what happened there? It actually, what happened was we, it lost its shape and it went almost to sort of um, into little globules. That's because I've got too much water on here. So I'm just gonna leave that, I'm gonna let that go. I'm not gonna worry about it. In fact, you know what I will do? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some of it off because it's gonna take too long to dry and then Rather than using an inky puddle, I'm going to double load my brush. So let's roll it in the Sedona and in the pale pink. So I've got both colours on the brush here. And I'm going to go back over and we're going to bring in these two colours. So we'll bring them in and get a lovely wiggly line. And get it so that it looks like it's bits of broken string which it does. Double load again into the Sedona and the pink. So I've got both of them. Let's put a little knot in. So we'll put a couple of little knots and then we'll just do some very, very gentle trails of color. And I think I need one more good bow up there and one more good bow up there. And there you go. There is your heart with your wreath and all the little flowers around it. And we've painted it onto a colored background. Now that's quite a strong color. So what do we do when we've got something that's has quite a solid pattern in terms of you can see all of the different letters and where would we go with painting this? Well, we've got a completely different composition for you. So I'm into the chocolate browns again, cause this is gonna be the the sort of wreath work, if you like, and into some white. Now, I mentioned um, the lovely Amy. And Andrew, I think we have got some photos, haven't we? Should we have a look at them? This is, so this is where Amy started. Right there on the left-hand side, you can see her petals and her leaves. She was really getting to grips with how much pressure to apply on the brush. And then the redder flowers that you can see in the middle, 
Her confidence was building, but there was still some work to do on her brush loading. Now, if you look at the jotter or her notebook that she's painted on the right hand side, and I don't know whether we can get any closer, can we, Andrew? We'll see if we can. Her work is stunning. The outline of the actual flowers is clear and crisp. There are no fluffy parts on the brushes. And we're going to be working on some compositions next, but her actual brush loading. So bearing in mind, she's 14, she's self-taught, she's done all of this from teaching guides, and she's done this in about six weeks. So what in between school and everything else, and we'll just see if we can get any closer to it so that you can see the detail because the detail on her work is absolutely stunning. Andrew's going to work on that while I just show you the balance of your hand. So remember, we're trying to keep our arm off the table. Now, this is a perfect example of why. I want to paint going up here in a in a stroke. So I'm going to be I'm literally I'm going to show you what happens when you put your arm down. So I've got my arm down and I can follow this and that's absolutely great. And I can make that happen. And I can make this bit happen. And then now I'm coming across here and I can sort of make that happen, especially if my brush is loaded. But what happens if I want to go up here and I want to go further than my hand will reach? That becomes really messy. And then I start to work, I'm working over my work. So if you can get used to keeping your brush on the page and your hand above it, you will get a much, much better result. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to, I'm gonna paint quite a large rose and I'm going to use the chocolate brown. And I'm so I'm gonna be working with this brown so that you can see, look at that on the pink. Doesn't it look stunning? It just lifts the color massively. And it, you can see there, look at that. Just, you can see that this is working really well. And I love that you're commenting. Thank you for your comments, um, Sue, about Amy's work. That's really generous. And also on the colors that I'm, um, working with you know and it is only a piece of paper and that's what makes it so easy to work with but look at this chocolate brown on the pink would you have thought to work with brown and pink together like this but it works doesn't it and the other thing that I'd like you to just look at is look at where I've positioned my petals so I've gone three up here and then two down here and the reason that I've done that is because now when I put this one on, it goes over the top of those two. So instead of coming round in a circle, we're giving ourselves that extra bit of um, depth by actually putting the petals in. Look at how that works. Instead of this coming round just in a circle, it's coming round, the petals are laying over each other. And then, the next thing I wanted to share with you is putting a single petal in. So you might just put one petal in there, or you might just take one petal out there. And those little bits make all the difference. Now I've just touched in a tiniest little bit of purple and look at how those layers are just starting to come up. So when I'm touching the purple, I'm side loading the tiniest, tiniest little bit of it. It's absolutely almost just literally a millimeter. And then I'm going to come into here. I'm just going to put another petal in there. Really nice, clean, lovely petal up there. Then this time we're going to go and we're going to wiggle up the back of the petal. And that's where the, the rosebud is going to stand. It's going to stand in this part and it's going to be very small. So it's really detailed and delicate. I'm going to come into it again. So it's very, very tight. And then into the dark shade that I've got. And 
the tiniest little bit of that purple again. And this time I'm just going to wiggle my brush. So I'm just wiggling it across the front of the design. And I'm now picking up the tiniest little bit more of that purple. So when I then come round here, I've got the, a hint of that colour just falling through those petals. Look at how delicate that is and how it's sort of all coming together. Now this one is going to look slightly different because we're pulling in more of the purple. So I'm going to come out here. So I've got that dark chocolate on the edge of my brush. I've got the purple on the outside. And actually, I think it's gonna look better the other way. So I'm gonna paint over it. I'm gonna put the purple, yes, that's gonna do it, there. I'm going really flat here with that, that stroke. So it's not coming up, it's going flat across. I'm going quite flat there, and then I'm coming round. So I've got that open oval shape that you were seeing a few moments ago. And I'm gonna go round again, really short and flat, and then another big round shape. So I've made it sort of come, start to come to life. So we're now, we're going to come back onto here and put another layer of that purple in. And a little bit more just there, and a little bit more just here a little bit more just there and so all I've done is pick up that purple I haven't picked up any of the brown I'm going to do that now so I've now got the brown and the purple back on my brush those two colors together just load that backwards and forwards and a tiniest little bit of white where that purple is and we need that to really make this bud pop because otherwise it's going to disappear into that background so we need the tiniest little bit to make that, there you go, there it is. It's coming together now, you can see it starting to pop. And this time we're going to be bringing in the colour and literally, and I'm just going to wiggle it and come round. I'm just going to do the same on this one, wiggle it and come round. And then let's bring that round and bring that one up there so we've got the the flowers the purples and the browns all coming together so i've got brown and purple i've got white and purple what i need now is to do purple and white so i bring this shade into the story so i've still got some brown on the edge but you can see now how this one is going to fit over here and you can bring, so the colour story starts to come together. So I've got three shades that I'm working with. My white, my purple, and that brown. And then I'm going to come back out and put another layer in. Here, another layer in. So we want that extra bit of depth that we've got. Keep pulling my chisel edge together. Come out again with the layers. I so wish... I could show you this in real life because it's when you see this that you see the colors really pop. So I'm going to that back stroke that we've got there. I'm going to get my purple and that little bit of white. And that's gonna come up here to make that bud. And then this time we're going to come wiggle, wiggle round. And I'm wiggling round that front and you can see then that we've got that little bit of extra detail. But I didn't fill in every single petal because I wanted it to look like a little story of colour. And then coming up the stem, I'm going to put ivy leaves. So those ivy leaves, we're going to have going in different directions. So we're going to start off with one of them with the light colour to the outside and then slide back and come down. And then the light colour to the outside, slide back and come down. And that is going to be our first. We'll go in this time with the purple and the white again. So back, slide, down. 
These are so, so good to do out, slide back. So we've got another one there. Our white and our chocolate is going to be the next one. This one's going to go out there. Look at how now this one's really standing out. You've got that depth of colour that it looks great. So bringing in the design, we'll get some more colour with our white and our brown. So out to the outside, come back there, out, back and round. This one wants another one just here. So I'm coming out, back and down, out, back and down. So I'm going to pull that one round and that one round. So we've got some of them overlapping. We'll go into the white and the chocolate brown and pull in a couple of extra leaves. So let's get some plain flat and wiggles in here. So we're going to put these just here. So we're building up the design. I'm going to go into the chocolate and the white. And we're going to go out here. So out and then back. And you can see how different it looks when you get the different shades and different colours coming together. I'm going to go here with these. Um, we need to go up here. And I'm going to put in just a few little uh, flowers. So the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to put in some little tiny flower heads and I'll show you these. So we're going to go in with the purple and the white and I've got quite clean colour on here. I've just wiped this onto a piece of uh, baby wipe. So I've got my purple and my white those two shades together. And the way that this works, you do a little sweep and stop, a little sweep and stop, a little sweep and stop, sweep and stop, sweep and stop. So that's the first flower. Then the next one, we're going to go, it's behind this little leaf, so we're going to go sweep and stop, sweep and stop, and just sweep and stop there, because that one's hiding. Then we'll put one here. So sweep, stop, sweep, stop, three, four, five. You should be able to get round a whole flower in one go. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to do another one where I'm just going to go with the white on the outside. One, two, three, four, five. So that one's starting to blend into the background. We'll take a little bit more and we'll go here. White one, two, three, four, five. Then now I'm starting to lose my colour. So I need to pull that chisel edge together, otherwise it isn't going to work. So pull that chisel edge right together and we'll go again. So let's go with the purple on the outside. One, two, three, four, five. This is so much harder to do if you put your arm down. So please try and get used to putting your arm out. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so I've put those little flower buds in. Now, the next thing that I want to do is show you this Queen Anne lace. So to do that, we're going to take the brown and I'll take the white. I'm just going to do this on a piece of card to show you what the effect is that we're trying to achieve. So we want to create a, a straight stem. It wants to be straight and it wants to have two stems off it. And off those two stems, we're going to put two more. So it's going to, it's going to be like that. Or it might be like this. It might be closer in together. So they might cross over each other. So you can see that that's what's happened. But they're the two shapes that we're after doing. And I'm going to put those into this picture. So we'll just close this up, on the chisel edge. Take a little bit of the chocolate brown, just get a little bit more of that, and the white. Keep those two colors as clean as we can. And then we'll come into where this is gonna go. So I'm going to come up here, straight. Now go straight straight, straight, 
off there, off there, off there, off there, off there, off there. So that's the first one. The second one's going to go in here. So straight, straight, off, 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 there, there. Then we're going to do another one here. So we'll do it there, off there, straight. So like that. And I think we need one here. So off. So you get those straight stems like that. Okay. And actually I need one more here. So there like that. So that gives us all the elements that we need. The next thing you need is a scruffy brush and we know how to make these. You get your brush and you give it a trim. Uh, it wants to be a basin haircut, not one of those perfect haircuts. It wants to be properly chopped up. And then I've only put paint on one half of the brush and I'm now going to stipple gently into the area that I've got here so it looks lacy. Now, when you're stippling, you will know when you need more paint because it will just naturally just start to disappear. You can see as I'm going here, it doesn't want to be sort of in one big bunch. It wants, so now I've run out of paint. So it doesn't want to be bunched up and it doesn't want it to be blobby either. So if it starts to be blobby, go back onto your work and get rid of some of the paint because you need to get, you need less. Okay, here, so let's go again. So with a little bit of the Queen Anne lace and we'll just put the buds, the flower petals on. Oh gosh, I wish you could see this in real life. It's come together really well. The colors look, as they're drying, they're really coming together. And I'm just literally putting in this little bit of detail that we've got there. Right now, to finish it off, I'm gonna take my white on the bottom of my brush and anywhere I've got a dark center, I'm gonna put a white dot. Anywhere that I've got a lighter center, I'm going to put a chocolate brown dot. So there, 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 there. You would be thinking, or oh, wouldn't you use the purple, but actually no, I think the chocolate brown looks good and I think I want chocolate brown in there as well. And there we have working on a coloured surface with a pattern giving you these two different designs and using just that one set of colours. So um, please have a go with this because it's so effective. And when you are painting, you know, painting on something like this is quite forgiving. It allows you a bit more time to be able to come up with different elements and different ideas. And the only thing that I'm going to do in this to just lift it a tiny little bit is I'm going to take my scruffy brush and I'm just going to put a little bit of that lace in here. But you can see I've put it in without the stems. It does not look as good. So I'll go back in and put those. So I'm just going to get those in now. But you do need to put in those stems because it sort of, it grounds the design. It makes it sort of come to life and it gives it a reason to be there rather than just being floating. So there we've got. Now I've just nabbed some of the stuff that Amanda's got for her collection because I want to, um, I want to be using something that she can then use in her books that she's doing. So we're work I'm working with a 220 GSM because it's what she's actually printed on at the moment. And I, I'm quite liking these heavier weights. It's given me something substantial to work with. So whatever you can get through your printer, I would say. Um, Carol, if you've got, if your printer going to be printing to order, I'd go with 220 if you've got it. And 220, our pure print is great for this because it gives you a really nice finish. But any of the packs that we've done, if you've got any of those left over, you know, use those as well because they help. Um, they've got some really nice finishes on them. And 
The other thing that you're also seeing is, you know, these stems are sort of giving me some direction of where to be able to be putting my design. And if you were printing off any of the designs from home, then just, you know, look at them, think about what colours you want to work with and then choose the design. Because I I particularly, I liked it because A, I'd got, we'd got a deal on these paints. So that was great for me because it meant I could give you a special offer. But also I love these colours and putting that chocolate brown with it just made all the difference. So I would just, you know, be saying, yes, absolutely. Get your favourite colours out. But that extra little bit of white um, just get, gives us um, something a little bit different. Now I'm just going to flick out. So I'm going to pull my chisel edge together and I'm just going to flick out from my design a couple of little strands. Very soft, very, very gentle because I don't want them to be obvious. I don't want them to be thick and clumpy. I just want very gentle, soft lines, almost like little fronds just coming out to pull the design together. So you can see we've just got these little tiny feathers of um, fern leaves coming out the design, just making it a little bit lighter, a little bit gentler and just finishing off that design. So that's the first of them. That's the second. The little bit of white in there, just bringing it and lifting it together. Quite heavy looking because it's on a dark background, whereas this one looks much lighter, albeit quite solid in the design that we've got there. And then while you've seen these little flowers that I've got there, I just want to show you a cherry blossom that you might want to paint. And so I'm just going to do this one for you. And we've got, you'll see, so this one. So now I've got, I've put the brown and the white on my brush and I've got a good, a good load of it because I'm, I'm going to be going quite away with it. So I'm starting at an angle. So I'm at about, what am I at? I'm at two o'clock of against this straight line here and then I'm going to slide and I'm going to twist the brush to the chisel edge and then slide it again okay and then I'm starting again at the same place and I'm going to slide it and this time whoops I've got enough paint let's get some more so this time I'm going to start again at the same place I'm going to come down and I'm going to slide and come up like that. So you can see this. So let me just go again there because I'm not happy with it. Just there. There it is. That's where I want it. And I want it a little bit thicker for a bit longer. Then we're going to come out from here like that. Then out there. So I'm pulling in all these elements and I'm sliding it along the branch when I'm doing it so that you can see that you've got these branches and they've crossed over already, but we'll just cross over another one there. There, I think that's probably going to be sufficient for me to get what I want onto here. Just pop that piece down there. OK, so now we're going to paint these little flowers. Now, if I use the um, purple on here and I'll do one so you can see, it's going, to, it's going to, we're going to lose part of it in the background. So there it is. And you can see it doesn't show up very well. So that determines straight away that my purple is going to be my inner colour. So we're going to go with the dark purple on the outside, um, on the inside. Just soften that so I can get a good, nice, clean stroke. And we're going to go round like this. And we're building up all five petals and I need those petals to be as close to perfect as you can get them so one round one round another one another one and another one so try and keep them really as good as you can do so you want them to be really nicely shaped and if you feel the brush is running out of paint as you're working Please just stop and get yourself some more paint because you don't want fluffy edges on them. 
So I'm coming back again. This time I'm only going to do three. So I'm going to do two, three. So I've got sort of like a little semi leaf. And the difference between changing the colours up this time, we're just going to do two and then one. So here we're going to do two. I've lost the white edge, so I need to get that back. So there's my second one. And then there's the third one. So they're going in directions. They're sort of following the line of the leaves that we've got. And then let's go again with another one here. And we'll just take a little bit of that white. Want that white just to come round. And this one's one a flower that's been out for a while. So it's got a little bit of a wiggle on the petals. And then we've got another one here that's only just coming out. So two and one. So they're the little bits of blossom that I want on the design. And now we're going to go into these centers. So to go into the center, I'm going to take half of the white and half of the chocolate brown. And I need to be sure that these colors stay separate. So the brown goes to the bottom and the white just to the top like that. So it's the, it's the blossom with the pollen on the top of it, just like that. And then we'll go with the brown again to the bottom and the white blossom on the top. Here I can put just a little bit of blossom because it hasn't come in, it's not open yet. So there, a little bit more here, there's the white and the brown to the bottom and then the brown to the bottom there and that little bit of white just there. And then finally, you can take your little brush, get the tiniest little bit of brown and just put some little stamens in. So I'm just dragging that color out. So just roll the brush. And we'll just pull that out just there. And the same here, just little bits of pollen, just all going in the same direction. So you can see them there. So little bits of pollen. And then finally, to finish it off, we're gonna go into the brown with the purple still on our brush. And I'm just going to put in a couple of little leaves and I'm just going to let these just literally fill the design like this. Now we did have a face to face weekend course a couple of weekends ago and gosh, it was so successful. I absolutely loved it. You guys did too. If anybody's interested in coming, we're just releasing the dates for April and they are literally available i think as i speak there are they're small groups we don't have more than 12 and i prefer to run them with less than that if it's possible so if anybody is interested please check them out because it's the time to book right now um but don't forget we'll still continue doing these free classes because that's what it's good for. For those of you that can't travel, it gives you the chance to be able to join in and keep your painting going. So there you can see a lovely piece of blossom across the tree on a very dark piece of printed card with lines down it, something that you wouldn't expect to think about painting gone to. And then the two other designs that we did, both of them, all of them working with these complementary colours just giving you an overview of what you can do. So there we go, that's better, isn't it? So until next month, everybody, thank you so much. But before you go, can I just show you Amy's work close up? Look at that, a 14 year old young lady who just comes home from school and practices. I'm so proud of her, wow. She's got a lovely future of painting ahead of us and there's lots to be learnt there from 
just taking the time to give yourself time to actually paint. So happy painting, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget, we've got a deal on these paints. In fact, if you're not a member of the Highlight Crafts um, of our club, then please join us because so many benefits and it is free to join. And then you get money off every time you shop. But take advantage of that. Instead of the normal $4.99, you're getting all of them for £16.50. Good night. God bless. Speak to you all again soon and happy painting. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you subscribe by clicking the button below. Then click the bell icon to receive notifications for all our new content.